Last time I told you about pathological demand avoidance and I guided you on how to prepare yourself and where to find help if your school is looking after the child with PDA. In this episode of Be Inclusive TV, I will answer one of the questions that I received from a special needs teaching assistant case study and I will give you my strategies on how to support a non-verbal child that expresses the challenging behavior. So welcome in Be Inclusive Q&A Thursday. If you are new to me, my name is B, and I'm advocating truly inclusive school provision. So here's me inviting you to follow my journey in creating truly inclusive provision that helps you to support children and develop your skills. Are you ready? Let's go! Looking after, helping and supporting non-verbal or pre-verbal children, it can be extremely difficult and rewarding at the same time. If you did not support this type of special needs yet, then you can listen to this case study to check how it looked like. Looking after children with no speech is not rare, even in the mainstream school. I was working in the mainstream primary school and I had three nonverbal and preverbal children. Okay, let's listen to the letter. Dear B, I work as a level 2 TA in a special school. A lot of children are nonverbal. Any tips for dealing with behavior issues, heating, biting, removal of clothes, deliberate urination, to name a few? For children who lack verbal reasoning skills would be great. I refer to one child who, after a difficult start to the academic year, is being educated individually. As I mentioned before, we are special school. This measure is a last resort, not like taken lightly. The aim is to reintegrate the child back into a class. The child is midway through the primary education, is non-verbal aside from about 10 words, one of which is a noticeably clear no. Unable to self-occupy, the child will empty drawers, throw objects, hit others and remove their clothes. We are currently supporting the child on a two-to-one basis with a children-led timetable and minimal demand. Even with these measures in place, the child will only sit for a moment. Demand of simple tasks such as shape matching will involve the child dropping to the floor to avoid the workspace having to have an adult either side to restrict movement away from the workspace. If it's a good day, the child will complete the task with minimal intervention. On the bad days, which are most, the child will get off the chair and attempt to slap a bite and headbutt to get away. The child will also attempt to slide off the seat and under the table. He will slap and pinch for no reason, being apparently perfectly happy. The child will remove clothes and refuse to put them back on. Efforts to redress the child are met with slapping, biting, kicking. The child will also remove clothes when cross and then urinate and or defecate the rebellatory. This will often result in the child trying to rub themselves in the urine or smear the feces. We use speech, widget symbols, photographs and sign along as methods of communication. 
However, the child is strong-willed and self-driven. Unless it is something the child wants, they seem unwilling to engage um, in communication. The child is generally happy, cheeky character and well loved by staff. Whereas the child has always been a bit of a handful, sadly we have come to the situation that the child can no longer be educated with their peers due to the amount of disruption caused and the number of staff required to assist. The staff are a dedicated team, our children's best interests are paramount and we strive for the best outcomes possible for each child. The child can access only playtimes and maybe a group outing or active play session once a week. Even at those times the child is very closely supervised and often removed from the activity early. This is because of the physical behaviours which often indicate that the child wants to finish the activity. Staff know the child well enough to spot the early warning signs so in most cases can remove the child prior to anyone getting hurt. The child is much more manageable and the behaviour has improved massively. However, the child lead timetable has its own drawbacks. Any tiny, and I mean tiny, attempt to lead the child to a more usual class routine is met with immediate refusal and aggression. This is creeping towards the child having even more control of the environment. You are trying for every trick we have, not every bribery as nothing interests the child for more than a couple of uses, or the child is so obsessed in becoming its own issue. In addition, we are aware that sensory processing is an issue but you must wear clothes in school and in the playground. We have also tried, where possible, planned ignored the behaviour and non-reaction to more physical behaviours. The child reacts to this by targeting children, knowing we must react. Wow. You will probably agree that it is a lot on the staff plate. I can hear the frustration from that letter, but I also can hear extreme determination to help that boy. Of course I never saw the boy and uh, I'm not sure about other issues except the non-verbal part so I will focus on that even though um, I'm kind of sensing that uh, the child can have a positional defiant disorder, um, ODD or pathological demand avoidance but it's only something that I can assume so Let's focus on the non-verbal part. So there is plenty of things that we can do for that child. I've chosen the most important one. The first challenge in helping to manage his behavior better is to understand why he is doing what is he doing. So the first and the main thing would be to use ABC method of analyzing the child behavior from day one. If you never done that before, there is a simple form to fulfill each time when the child expresses the challenging behavior, where you are describing what happened, what did you do and say what the child did, what was the consequences, etc. Somebody else not involved in supporting the child, maybe with um, uh, a lot of experience in uh, managing behavior, challenging behavior, will analyze um, this form. Also, you can look for the patterns in the behavior, but to do this, you will have to have at least between four to eight form, fulfilled forms. This can only help you to make decisions and change your actions and adapt the child's environment um, so we can make uh, sure you are putting as much details as possible. 
This is very important and if you struggle and if you would like to have some help from outside the school, that probably will be the first thing that they will ask you to do anyway. So there is no reason to wait from the special education needs and disability leaders point of view. It's better to use your own tools to evidence the child uh, progress or the child uh, behavior patterns. The next important thing for this child would be to assess the child's individual needs and decide on the next goal. Not the school goal, which always will be to integrate the child into class, but it's not always the best one. In this case, you can clearly see that the child is not ready to integrate. I would um, suggest the shorter school day, only mornings maybe, to limit inappropriate challenging behavior, to lower his anxiety and to make it easier for the teachers and for the child to uh, learn the communication skills that he needs. I would change the child target goal and the new targets um, from my point of view should be focusing on functional skills, following the school routine and tackling the child's inappropriate behavior. When the child uh, master above with the one-to-one um, -one support, you will be able to integrate the child by slowly introducing one extra child then a small group, then the bigger group, um, and eventually the child will be able to join the class. The next very important change will involve management of the child environment. You must manage your environment to limit unwanted, inappropriate behavior. The child is clearly not ready to work in the classroom. He hits bites, throw resources, refuse, physically targets his peers. Very clearly, the child did not master the routine, even with adults, so there is no point of trying to reintegrate him into the class yet. He should be taught in a different room and for the time being, until he master the routine and follow the adult directions, he should stay away from children, especially that he targets them to get adults' attention. The room should be almost empty, no drawers with toys, things to trash, no free access to the resources, etc. The attention should be on adults in this room, so the child will have to use the adult and communicate with them. This is how the room should look like to increase the possibility of communication with the adults. This layout works extremely well if you would like to teach structure, independent skills, communication skills, social skills, etc. You should divide the room into different areas and the first one should be the transition area, which uh, should be clearly marked maybe spot, maybe a chair to wait, uh, and it should face the daily schedule, the plan. Um, the daily schedule doesn't have to be followed in order. You could give the child options to uh, choose the activity that he would like to do it first. But that, of course, depends on, on the child and his behavior. The next area is the play area with no toys there, as this will be the way to work on communication skills. The only thing there should be a PE mat or other type of mat or cushions where the child can play or read a book with us. The next one should be the safe place where the child can go and chill, self-regulate, hide when he is sad, tired or angry. The next uh, feature of the room should be the independent workstation facing the wall to practice his independent skills so we can check what the child is able to do it independently. 
Next one should be the group table with two chairs on each end of the table. On this table you will teach the child simple task or how to fulfill the worksheet like how to match two the same pictures or how to link two bricks together etc. Uh, there should be a simple shelf out of the child reach with toys and items um, such as sensory toys or other resources that you will need. We must prepare visual representation pictures of those items so when the child will approach us we can use this as the learning opportunity to teach the child communication, appropriate communication. We want the child to ask a point to the toy's item. The toy should be used for the short time and we should use the timer. Rotation of the toys is necessary as children become bored. You should place the toys in a transparent jars or boxes with closing mechanism. Great idea would be to make it difficult to open them and access the toys uh, for a child. This way, by using these sabotage techniques, you can increase the chance of communication, so we can practice positive communication with the children. To tackle the stripping, urination, etc., uh, I, I will suggest immediately to remove the child to the bathroom and to not make comments about the behaviour except the positive one, so you can only comment on I can see you want the toilet. Let's go to the toilet. Good boy, you want the toilet and we are in the toilet. Next thing for the child or for any nonverbal child is to write a list of the words that he can say verbally and think about the words that he will need to understand and communicate his needs in the school and prepare the visual support graphics picture presentation with or without the text. I prefer with the text. This is my proposition of the words that I think would help the child to communicate his needs in the first stage of his learning. So I've mentioned the names of the toys uh, in the jars or boxes, the words no and yes, the words class, outside, toilet, bag, please, thank you, the word sad, happy, help, choosing time, workstation. So with the list of the words that the child can speak, um, I would definitely use the discrete trial training to teach the targeted words and to monitor the child's progress. Make sure that you thoroughly research what are the child's strengths and interests and start building the relationship and child independence through um, those items. This way the child will feel safe and he will trust us. He will also want to come to school and he will um, more easily follow your directions. You can follow the teacher planning but you have to make sure that the work is adapted and differentiated. You mentioned that the boy is struggling with simple um, object matching task. Uh, also you mentioned that the child struggle with uh, long sitting uh, or with sitting. Make this activity short, start with matching only two objects and when he um, fulfills the task, make a big deal of it and give him a prize or choosing time. Give the boy high five and praise his good work. It is important to show the child that the task is achievable. You can increase the amount of um, items that he needs to match um, next time to two pairs. The next one would be to gather the simple but interactive uh, turn-taking games. I usually use bubbles, pop-up pirates, kittles, etc. Play with the child um, simple turn-taking game. You can play at the table or on the mat. 
you can mix stitching with the play that works best, especially when you are using the discrete trial training. Remember that you must teach the child how to march first before you ask him to do the same at the workstation. But remember, when the child is doing his task at the workstation, it should be done independently, so you can observe and make notes, evidence the child progress, but you shouldn't interfere. The child should be able to uh, fulfill the task that you introduced to him before. There is plenty more that I could add to help you or that child, but I already feel that um, the amount of information um, is overwhelming and the video is too long. Okay, there you have it. I'm curious, what do you think? What would you do? How would you help that boy? Did you work with nonverbal children with challenging behavior? Do you have more ideas how to help? Please comment below um, the video and consider subscribing to my channel as this will help me to create more video like this one and more people will be able to learn for free. Please don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you for your comments in advance as I am going to give away the LEGO Captain America collaborative set of course after making the video review next week. Until the next time, with love, B.